Okay, everyone. In his book, Breath, James Nestor discusses the epidemic of underdeveloped jaws in adults. He discusses his own underdeveloped jaws and then proposes a solution to his underdeveloped jaws as being the homeoblock orthodontic appliance. In a prior video, I said that I disagreed that that was the best way to expand an adult maxilla, and I asserted that there are better ways, such as with bone-anchored expanders like the MSE. In this video, I return to, the, to, to that question, to that topic of discussion, except I'm bringing with me uh, an article sent to me by Dr. Rebecca Bachow, who is an orthodontist and a periodontist in Washington State, and actually, I'm going to be interviewing Dr. Bacow later today, so you all will get a chance to meet her soon once I post that video in the coming days. Her article is called, What is the Transverse Dimension and Why Do We Care About It? And actually, she takes up the question of bone-borne versus tooth-borne expanders and the advantages and disadvantages of each in this article. So, I want to discuss uh, that with you right here, right now. Dr. Bakow states that uh, tooth-borne expanders like the homeoblock, like the AGA, like the DNA, like Schwartz expanders, and even like uh, lingual uh, wires like the ALF and uh, the controlled arch that the AGA providers use to provide transverse expansion, or, or so they say. She says all this, this entire class of expanders, what they do is they push on teeth, mostly, and in doing so, cause four problems. Buckle plate loss and gum recession, tooth tipping, which leads to dental as well as further periodontal breakdown, as well as uh, orthodontic complexity and that when you tip teeth, it makes it very hard to uh, bring teeth into proper occlusion. Number three, these appliances do not expand the nasal airway. And number four, they provide unstable results that require a lifetime of retention or retainer use. And Dr. Bakow also says that all four of these disadvantages do not exist with the bone-borne expanders like the MSE and other TAD uh, using bone-anchored expanders. And there are others, it's not just the MSE. So let's dive into the first issue. Number one, the issue of these tooth-borne expanders such as the homeoblock causing uh, alveolar bone loss and gum loss. So why would this happen? Well, the question is, are these expanders, are they pushing on teeth or are they splitting the mid-palatal suture? In what way are they expanding? And you would, I think you would find that their providers would, would argue that the maxilla is actually expanding with these appliances and it's not just that the teeth are moving. Well, Dr. Bakow gives us this food for thought. To split the mid-palatal suture requires between 900 and 4,500 grams of force, whereas to move a tooth requires only between 10 and 150 grams of force. So if you have an expander that is pushing, if not entirely, then mostly on the teeth and on the area above the teeth, do you think that that force is going to split the suture or is it going to move the teeth? Well, basic physics and basic logic would tell us that it's going to be the teeth that budge first on that force, under that force. And so, you have to conclude that it, these appliances are mostly just moving teeth. Okay, well, Corbridge in 2011 and DiGregorio in 2019 asserted that when you move teeth, you lose the buccal plates, and there is therefore a risk of gum recession. So, both of these uh, dentists, doctors, concluded that moving teeth outward 
when you expand by pushing on teeth outward, you push them out through the bone, and that bone is then lost, and since the bone serves as a scaffolding to the soft tissue or the gums, the gum is then lost as well. So these providers might then counter by saying, well, sure, we're pushing the teeth out through the bone, but then new bone appears through the process of remodeling. This is a big buzzword that's, that's used to try to explain off uh, this, uh, this, this phenomenon of pushing the, the teeth through the bone. They say the bone remodels and then appears on the other side. Well, according to Garib, in 2010, Side, You're kidding Check me, Siri. According to Garib in 2010, bone does not follow if you push teeth. Okay? So, uh, Dr. Bakau cites Garib in her article, and in my own experience, when the aga pushed my teeth through the bone, no new bone appeared. So, I am... Uh, going to take the side of Dr. Bakau and Dr. Garib here and, and, and call bullcrap. No, bone does not follow if you push the teeth. So that is the first disadvantage, and it's the most serious. Okay, when you push on teeth, you get bone loss and gum loss. The second disadvantage of toothborne expanders, tooth tipping. Tooth tipping. So the teeth are like this, you push on them with the expander, and they go like this. Well, what's the problem with that? There's a few. So, Dr. Bakau is a periodontist as well as an orthodontist, and she states that tipped teeth are very periodontally unhealthy. Teeth are meant to be upright. And so, when you put chewing and biting forces on tipped teeth, it provides an unhealthy kind of force up into the alveolar bone and into the teeth themselves. So, there's periodontal breakdown and dental breakdown that occurs with time. And lastly, this teeth tipping uh, makes it very difficult to, to, to bring teeth into proper occlusion. It is much easier to bring, a proper, bring about a proper bite when teeth are upright. Moving on to the third disadvantage. These appliances do not expand the nasal airway. Okay, so maybe there's a little bit of change in the maxilla with uh, these appliances if they're very carefully used. Okay, maybe there's some amount of change to the mid-palatal suture, or to the maxillary bone, because not 100% of the force is going into the teeth, just most of it. But maybe there's some force actually going into the maxilla itself and changing the maxillary bone. Well, compared to something like the MSE, it's a negligible amount of change to the nasal airway. With a bone-borne expander, you are getting millimeters of expansion of the nasal airway and getting all of the advantages that come with that. The ability to nose breathe, the ability to, um, yeah, well, to nose breathe, isn't that enough? Isn't that a good enough advantage of expanding the nasal airway? Nose breathing is everything, as we talked about yesterday. And so, these appliances do not expand the nasal airway, and uh, bone-borne expanders do. Lastly, tooth-borne expanders require a lifetime of retainer use in order to stabilize results. Um, if you could even call it stabilization, or you could say the results are never stable, and so you have to wear a retainer for the rest of your life. Essentially, when you push the teeth out, they have a tendency to want to come back in. And so when we use toothborne expanders, we have to wear retainers in order to preserve that expansion. Whereas with bone-borne expanders, uh, you, the results are more stable. And so much less retention is required. So those four reasons lead me to believe that James Nestor's homeo block is not the best solution for expanding an adult maxilla. And I think that a bone anchored option like the MSE is superior. So thank you to Dr. Bakau for sharing this article with me. And I look forward to interviewing her later and sharing that with you all. 
very soon. That's it for now. Peace out.